this game though. Clear, clearly, they don't. Uh, Chief I mean, says, they gotta... uh, uh, "Stop lying, being all cowgirls fans smoke weed." <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Not me. Um, he says, uh, "Ben, this this ain't the cat. That's the Eagles fan." Uh, no, this is this is Tyon that's on the line right here. Uh, he's not an Eagles fan, oh. uh, but he, he said he's, the- I'll I'll, uh, I'll talk to you later though, Chiefs. Maybe we can link up to get uh, get in contact with you again. But the biggest thing, one of the biggest things I probably wanted to talk about before I let you go is Bob McNair. Once again, we have an owner that feels so confident to make a comment like this. And he said, we cannot have the inmates running the prison. First of all, <laughs> these are NFL players. Granted, yes, some of them are criminals, but not all of them. So when you bound a entire group of guys into this, you got to understand they're going to be pissed. And then most of the people in this meeting were black. So again, to, to if you're talking to a group of black people and you say, we cannot have the inmates running the prison. What are they going to think? They think you're talking about them. So I understand he came out with an apology, but at, at, at this point, your team, the people on your team, you had DeAndre Hopkins didn't even show up at a personal day, quote unquote. You got Texans players not 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 uh, siding with the owner, not agreeing with the owner. And this is something that you can't say, but I'll say this. If this is how you feel, then your true uh, thoughts are coming out because uh, Shannon Sharp basically said if he would say this in a group of room and in a room full of players, wh- what does he say when they're not around? Um, so, and I know you had some posts on this on Facebook, so I definitely want to give you the floor. Oh yeah, man. You know, um, I mean, you 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 have to look at this, man, and you have to understand that people people want to say. Oh, it was just an analogy. And it was a bad analogy. And you know, first off, the analogy is really you don't want you don't want your inmates running the asylum, which refers to crazy people running a crazy house, right? Trying to run a crazy house. But beyond beyond that just that statement, you have to you have to understand that you're in a meeting talking to black players who have been using this platform to protest against injustice, equality and oppression. And then you make a comment about them being inmates? I that I mean to me that that signifies exactly what the owners uh feel about these players. And it's a it's a it's it's an ownership. I mean it's an entitlement thing. It's an entitlement thing to them. They feel like they're doing the players a favor because they're they're playing, they're making a lot of money and and this echoes a lot of people's sentiments as well, is what I'm saying, too. These players make millions of dollars. People feel like because these players make millions of dollars, they have no reason to speak out on anything because they make millions of dollars. You have to realize that these players, a lot of these players came from nothing. These players came from the same neighborhoods that they're trying to fix. These players came from ghettos. They came from poverty. They came from bad uh, education systems, you know, look at Richard Sherman. Richard Sherman came out from one of the worst schools in, in, in Los Angeles. You know, his school, he's the second, he's the second person to go to a, a, to go to Stanford from that school in their entire history. The second person. So this, this is not a quality school that he's getting, you know, a quality education he's getting. So when he's telling you that people are oppressed, He's telling you about his own experiences. These players are telling you about their own experiences. Even though they make money now, they they dealt with these issues. So when you have people who constantly talk about, you know, these players making millions of dollars, they have no reason to protest, and then you have the owners now coming out and making comments like that, what it says to me is that these owners don't care about this protest. These owners don't care about equality. They don't care about oppression. They don't care about nothing that has to do with America. The thing that they care about is their dollar. That's what they care about. Their bottom line. The bottom line. The bottom line is, what can we do to stop from losing money right now? If we need to shut these, we need to let these players know that we're in control, that we run this, and that they work for us. That's what that comment really meant. That comment meant to shut up, 
Y'all work for us. Y'all don't have no power, no say in this, because we run this. Y'all don't run nothing here. Now, here's the irony of the situation. Because if you ever, police will tell you, etc. The prison system is actually ran by inmates. <laughs> right? right? They create they create the rules within the prison system. They create a lot of stuff that happens in the prison system. Right? They police themselves for the most part. So that's that that comment is just so degrading altogether. You know, especially like that in a room with a bunch of players that are trying to do better in America, who wants better for people in America, wants better for the organization in America. Like that that's just a really like it's just a really degrading and deflating comment. And it makes you and as a player you know, you look at DeAndre Hopkins, he took a personal day. Deontay Foreman took a personal day as well. I think he didn't show up as well. Um, and you had about, I think they said it was 10 players all together that didn't show up. You know, these players are probably feeling defeated right now because they're just like, look, we're, we're fighting a losing battle because these, these owners don't care about us. They, they don't care about, the only thing they care about is us being entertainers. They want us to entertain their people. They want us to make money for them. And they don't give... They don't, they don't care about what happens to me personally. They don't care about what happens to black people personally. Once, once we can make money. Yeah, and, that, that, is, that is the bottom line, is that how much money are we losing from this? Even Roger Goodell doesn't care. His comment was, when are we going to get past this protest thing? It's not a protest thing. This is, people, this is stuff that people go through every day. This is stuff that... Exactly. That these these players, family, friends, kids, even experience every single day. Uh, so it's not gonna go away until there is some some full dialogue. I think they have to be completely honest with each other, which I don't think they've been. Well, you, you look at Bob McNair, he has, but I think the players, the owners, the commissioner, they need to sit down and talk about what. What is the middle road? Because right now it is completely divided. It is, and I don't, I don't know when or if it's going to get to a middle road. Um, but in, in the chat room, welcome to angry black man in the building. He says the players on the Cowboys had no problem with their massa telling them that they're not going to kneel. They have been complicit slaves. And, and I wanted to read that comment because the people, the all the players. Ultimately, they're going to decide what they decide to do. Either they're going to agree with what their owner says, which I will say this. the I don't think the Cowboys necessarily agree, but I do think they want to get paid. And unfortunately, some some players, some of them may be new to the league, and they're picking the money over this over this cost. Um, and that's just, that, yeah. that's just facts. Some people don't. They yeah. just want to get their money. And do what what they want to do, which it's you know it's kind of it is what it is with that point. I mean, I mean, but you know, I I hate that I hate that everybody puts it on the players, and here's why: because the players can only do so much. Like these players can protest; they can have silent protest. You know, I'm 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 like Jerry Jones showed me that he's like he's he's through the line. He's through the line. He's like, yo, look. If you if you if you want to protest, you protest on your own time. If you protest while the flag is going, while the national anthem is going, you won't be on my team. And nobody has yet to challenge that theory, even though me, because just the type of person I am, I would have probably challenged this theory. I would be yeah. like, okay, yeah, let me see you go ahead and cut me. Right? <laughs> I, I would I would have been the one to be like, all right, you know, I'm that I'm I'm the Negro that's going to challenge. If you're going to tell me you're going to do it, I want to see you do it, right? But exactly. I can't, I'm not, I'm not mad at players for not wanting to challenge his authority, but I am mad at people who, uh, who are constantly ridiculing these players but not challenging authority, but you're not helping the situation, right? So as, as Jamil Hill had pointed out in one of her tweets, which ended up getting her suspended, right, she was like, hey, you can help the players by boycotting their sponsorships, right? Boycotting sponsorships. Boycotting these people who sponsor NFL teams. So, you know, products 
ESPN, things like that. You have the power to do those things. You can hurt their bottom line as well. You don't need to have the players hurt their bottom line because the thing is, when the players hurt their bottom line, when the players hurt their owner's bottom line, they also hurt their own bottom line, right? So if a player gets suspended, yeah, he might have hurt Jerry Jones a little bit, but he still has a family to take care of at home. He still yeah. has to take care of his family. He still needs to get a job. He still has those things to do, right? And I, I commend a player who wants to kneel and lose his job for kneeling, such as Colin Kaepernick, who, you know, took a knee and risked it all to uh, to to make a point. Colin Kaepernick still has a family to take care of. You know what I'm saying? He still has his, you know, he still has stuff to do. And guess what? If you're not contributing to any of his stuff, you can't complain about anything. If you're not out there helping, you cannot complain about somebody else not doing something. If you're not fully engaged in the in the in the situation, you yeah. gotta be. And, and, and that and that's my issue with all the critics who talk about players not doing this, not doing that. What are you doing? If you're not doing nothing, you're no different than anybody else. You're no different than the media who's constantly trying to portray these players as uh, as ignorant or wrong or ungrateful or spoiled. You're no different than those same people because you're criticizing the same. You're, you're criticizing them just the way the media is, and you're not putting in nothing. You're not putting in the footwork. You're not putting your money where your mouth is. You're not spreading the message. You're not doing nothing. You have to do something. Don't criticize nobody if you're not doing anything. That's my feeling. That's that's a good point. That's a good point. Now, in, in the chat room, we've uh, welcomed Mandelion. Also, welcome Vince Wright, the governor, uh, DJ Nunu, also DJ Queen. So, there. the The question was in the chat room: Was there a Cowboys player that was cut because of protesting? And the, it, he was. And <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, Demontre Moore was cut because he raised his fist at the end of the anthem. Now, here's... So, he, he did what he said he was going to do. But, this is Demontre Moore. Demontre Moore does, did not really get that much playing time. I, I really... I want to see if Zeke was to kneel, if Dak was to kneel, if Dez was to kneel, would you cut all three of those guys? No. Hell, no. No, you wouldn't. No. So... You're gonna you're gonna cut the guy who clearly didn't get that much playing time. Um, so if he wants to say he backed up his point, if Jerry Jones wants to say that, uh, I mean I think that's fine. But that's he, that, that, this, this, this is not yeah yeah basically like you said yeah. So, it's, a, it's, a, it's a scare attack. It's like it's like old school where they wanted to punish the slaves and they would take that one slave outside and they would whoop the crap out in front of all the other right. slaves so and say, hey, right. this is what's going to happen if you don't follow instructions, right? right. Same thing. The same concept that applies. You know what? You can whoop one. You're not going to whoop all of them. You're not. Right. Exactly. Right? You can't, we, you, you, so, you can't whoop all of us in a group because that's impossible. It's one versus 53. Exactly. But the thing is, it's a scare tactic, right? And it's used to put fear in the hearts of people to make them think just make them think about what if it's me? What if they will cut me? But you have to, like I said, you have to realize that as players, again, yeah, the players run this league. The ownership do not run the league. The players run the league. And Nobody I, I think, comes here to see the owner. I think the biggest Nobody. thing is <laughs> there. W- there is going to be a lockout in 2021, I believe, because there is so much uh, division between the owners and, and the players, and the players, and the commissioner, you, you gotta, you gotta think about the the risk, and the the when they put their bodies on the line every single day, and most of these guys don't get guaranteed money, or they got a fraction of the money that's guaranteed. Um, they they're not able to 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 demonstrate the values that they care about. They're not able to wear something that says Black Lives Matter. They're not able to do certain things. The NFL is going to be in a lockout. I truly believe it, and I don't know I, this. I don't know how they're going to come to a middle ground because there's so much division. They, they're not seeing eye to eye. They feel like they feel like slaves right now. Uh, there is 
a lot of players um, uh, that feel like slaves right now at this time. 